Hi, Kathy. My name is Joanne, and I would like your help with question 3.4 on genetic engineering. The diagram below summarizes the steps involved in genetic engineering. People, when you see anything to do with genetic engineering, remember we are looking at artificial selection as opposed to natural selection. This is artificial selection. We, the humans, specifically select what we want. Now, a donor cell with 54 chromosomes, so we know it's not a human, um, was taken from the muscle cells of a sheep. Now remember, if it's muscle cells, immediately you know that those cells are diploid. Why? Because they are somatic cells. And what are somatic cells? Somatic cells are body cells. So you've got some somatic cells and then gametes. Gametes are your sex cells. That's what you're going to find in a sperm cell and in an ovum. Okay, so they'll, have, they'll be haploid. They have half the, the, the genetic material and half the chromosomes of a diploid cell. All right, so the muscle cell is a diploid somatic cell of a sheep to create a new offspring. So immediately you know we're looking at cloning. Right, they've given us a little schematic here. So we've got sheep M is crossed with sheep N and it produces sheep P. So sheep P is the baby. All right, then they tell you a cell is removed from the muscle tissue of sheep P when they are mature. Whether they mature, whether they're young, doesn't matter. They're going to have the same muscle cells. Okay, and the same nucleus. So this nucleus here is going to be diploid. It's from a muscle cell. They then remove the nucleus from the muscle cell and they stick it into a sheep's ovum with genetic material removed. So you must remember if it's an ovum, it's going to be haploid. All right, and it's going to have half the chromosomal number why? Because it's going to join with the male sperm cell to form a baby. So we're not having this process. We have this ovum and we then insert this diploid nucleus into this ovum to have Z. Now under normal fertilization, we would, and I'm going to put this here, so please focus. We have um, your gametes. Okay, and remember the gametes are going to be N, they're going to be haploid, all right? So we'll have 27 chromosomes in the male gamete, 27 chromosomes in the female gamete, and fertilization will take place. Fertilization takes place, and we end up with 54 chromosomes, which is going to be a diploid zygote except here we had gametes and it produced sheep p normally but then they take that diploid nucleus from a, a muscle cell and they put it into an empty ovum cell the ovum cell is then put in inserted into sheep q so sheep q is nothing more than an incubator and <coughs> what results is sheep R. So sheep R and sheep P are going to be identical. They're going to have identical genetic material. Why? Because they took the full uh, uh, nucleus, a diploid nucleus from the muscle cell and they put it into that ovum and we produced sheep R. So sheep P and sheep R are identical. Okay, sheep R has been cloned. Let's look at our questions. Name the genetic engineering process. Oh, it's cloning. It's as simple as that. Cloning. Right, next one. Name the number of chromosomes that will be in A, a somatic cell of the sheep. Well, they've told you they're 54 chromosomes, so it's 54. Okay? You don't have to write chromosomes because it's in the question. Um, structure Z. We know structure Z is from the muscle cell of sheep P, so that is also going to have a full diploid complement. It will be 54. Okay, now, explain why sheep M and N were mated with one another in this process. 
Okay, why? Well, first of all, I would say that sheep M and N, all right, are selected um, and crossed or mated because they've used the word mated here. So they selected and mated to transfer desired characteristics to the offspring. And if I remember correctly, offspring was sheep P, offspring sheep P, okay? To offspring sheep P. And then sheep P is used to clone, ah, clone, clone sheep R. Okay. Which sheep in the diagram will be genetically identical to sheep R? I remember showing you that it would be sheep P. Okay? Because they used sheep P's nucleus. Now explain your answer. So let's extend this page. First of all, they take the haploid nucleus from the ovum is removed. Okay, that's going to be step one. The next step is that the diploid nucleus from the muscle cell in sheep P um, is removed. And what happens? Inserted into the ovum. Okay? So now the ovum has got this haploid nucleus. Okay? Sheep Q has ovum which contains a complete, okay, complete identical genetic information as sheep P. So that's the important part. Complete, identical, genetic information that came from sheep P. Because this ovum is now carrying that genetic material. And people, that is what cloning is all about. <laughs> <laughs>